A gnarly set of forearms is impressive even without a mean physique and can easily be implemented into your training program. This video will show you how to build your forearms to the maximum potential with the best exercise. The wrists and forearms can go through a variety of movements. Flexion, extension, supination, pronation, radial deviation, and ulnar deviation. Flexion and extension are the primary movements you want to consider and will give you the most bang for your buck, at least in terms of hypertrophy. The muscles that do the other four movements are comparatively smaller and will make a marginal impact in terms of forearm size. Isometrics are great to tack on as well so they can help with exercises like rows, pull-ups, lat pull-downs, and deadlifts. Grip strength is also correlated with shoulder stability and health and even longevity. A sinful PubMed search with grip strength will show you 2,000 plus studies, most of them discussing grip strength and longevity. This study looked at thousands of participants over the course of decades and measured their grip strength correlated with their testosterone levels and found some pretty interesting things. First, they found grip strength to correlate with testosterone. They also found those with higher testosterone levels had a lower risk of low muscle strength. Obviously, testosterone can also be correlated with hypertrophy, so it's safe to say grip strength shouldn't be neglected in our training fully maximize our hypertrophy and strength potential. Since the primary movements we want to work on, flexion and extension, are pretty simple movements, there isn't so much we can do as far as fancy goes. Barbells, dumbbells, and cables are great for both motions and can be super supersetted with most upper and lower body exercises. Make sure you don't fatigue out any other muscle groups you're working on when you do so. For example, for cable wrist extensions, you don't want to have your biceps be in an actively isometric position when you're doing them, because then you'll fatigue out your biceps before you finish the set and you'll garner unnecessary local fatigue, limiting your, your gains for other muscles. If you kneel down, you can brace your arm against your knee and be right underneath the cable attachment, ensuring your biceps don't get fatigued out while you knock these out. You can also perform these with an easy bar off a bench, super centered with lying tricep extensions for both wrist extension and wrist flexion. The wrist extensors, I feel, often get ignored when training forearms. The fact is our wrist flexors get worked quite a bit already from all the pull movements we do. That and a lot of isometric forearm exercises, like hanging from a pull-up bar, farmer carries, etc., also work in the forearm flexors quite a bit. I try to even out the strength of the wrist extensors with wrist flexors. There's not too much research behind this, but any noticeable strength difference in any parts of the body with antagonist muscles, such as the hamstrings and quads, etc., can be a precursor to injury. So this may mean doing one or two more sets of wrist extension than wrist flexion. Doing two to four sets of wrist flexion or extension for 10 to 25 reps is plenty per workout. Similar to the mid delts, you can do these on either push days, pull days, or both. If you're doing both, ease into adding the sets. Just like with the mid delts I talked about in my shoulders video, add in two to four sets every two to two weeks or so and try to even them out throughout the week. For example, if you're doing a push pull leg split and doing four sets of wrist extension and wrist flexion on your push day, then do three sets of, for your forearms and sit on your push day and two sets for your forearms on your pull day and steadily progress to three to four sets in each day and only doing again on either the second push day or the second pull day. You can also add a little more love to the forearms with isometric sprinkled in throughout your workout. For example, hanging from a pull up bar after reverse flies or cable push downs or chest flies. The goal here is a 60 second hold. Once you hit that 60 second mark, try progressing to single arm hold by shifting more of your weight to one hand. For example, start in a double arm hang position then shift to your left saw weight, you're holding 80 to 70% of your body weight, and your right hand is holding only 20 to 30% of your weight. Over time, this will become easier, and you can then ease into going from a double arm to single arm hold. Just make sure to keep your shoulder blades down the entire time, especially when doing single arm holds. Also, when adding or taking weight off a of barbell, you can do a pincer grip with the weight plates. This can be very tough on a 45 pound Olympic plate, but you'll quickly see your strength soar with these. You can also sandwich two or three 10 pound plates together when adding them on or off the barbell throughout your workout. Super setting dumbbell bench with pharma carries or holds with the same weight is also a super easy trick to implement. Instead of doing pharma carries for distance, do them for time, as distance can be difficult to track and you might walk a little faster or slower week to week. Once you can do 45 to 6 seconds with a given weight, bump it up by 5 to 10 pounds. Overall, forearm exercises add very little, if any, fatigue. You can easily sprinkle them throughout your workout. Progress is simple with reps, volume, or weight. You don't need to go more than that. If you guys want to see a more in-depth video on forearm training, let me know in the comments below. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.